uh, chipping in, all of the people that, that helped out. Well, Jesse, um, in the last minute, took him a second. And um, at this point in time, I'd like to call upon um, Arthur Fisher. I understand um, he's going to be uh, uh, saying a few words. I do want to mention one thing before that, which is that uh, in a couple of years, uh, the, 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 before Mama was Nifter, she came to our house a bunch of times for Shabbos. And inevitably, um, every time that uh, she came to our house, um, we always got uh, at least one call from uh, Gita to say good Shabbos to her. Sometimes she called twice because the first time I wasn't there yet. But I don't think there was a Shabbos that, that went by that, uh, that uh, Mom was in our house that Gita didn't call to say good Shabbos. And at this point in time, I'd like to call upon um, her husband, uh, Arthur, to uh, share with us some words. Justice and expressing her uh, her thoughts and relating some of her memories of Mama. Aisha's Chayel Me Himself. I'm trying to think about Mama a little so long during the past month. I couldn't really pinpoint, pinpoint specific memories. It was more like a continuum. Hundreds upon hundreds of days of Mama's Chayel. Portions of our portions of delicious sweet and sour tongue. For hours upon hours on the swing of the court, waiting for the to come home from shore. During the past month, I also came to realize something else. Although it might not have been the first word that came to my mind to describe it, looking over, looking over her lifetime, I come to realize that she was a fluid person. Mama was always up to a challenge. Whether it was moving from the big city to Taylor, being one of the few working women of the 1950s, topping off a New York Times Sunday crossword puzzle, or starting life again in Baltimore in her senior years. She fearlessly learned how to drive in her 60s and got her ears pierced at 70. Nothing seemed to daunt her. So when it came down to it, I thought it was a few specific memories I wanted to share with you, mostly because I don't think anyone else had those specific experiences. A unique, a unique to her, to Ita, so the lessons you learned in the behavior she witnessed were common to everyone. First memory isn't really a problem at all. Uh, when, when Brother Shmuel got married on October 17, 1993, I had occasion to walk Papa out of the hall and escort him to the car. That day was his 56th wedding anniversary. As I kissed him goodbye, he broke into tears. You see, Mama had just been diagnosed with cancer, and Papa was beside himself with water. I had never seen him so distraught, and on such a happy day. After his patera, I came to the conclusion that had Mama predeceased Papa, he probably would not have lived much longer. Papa understood that Mama took care of his every need, and he could not bear to think of losing her. Due to the nature of their business, they spent almost every hour of every day together for 62 years. <coughs> his breakfast was always on the table when he came home from shore. When it came to Meyer E. Fay Poultry, Mama was the one with the business acting. It was her meticulous bookkeeping and the ledgers we sat on at one time or another, and her business savvy that enabled Papa to have 24 hour nursing care in his final months at home. Even the most minute detail, like sending Ian Tickle down the hill so Papa could make kiddish and chill was seen to my Mama. If only I could have told Papa, don't worry, she will have nearly 20 more incredible years including uh, seeing a slew of mayor and foodists grow and holding a great, great grandchildren. Several years earlier, I was in sleepaway camp, and as one of the oldest campers, my bunk was probably a mile from the parking area. One visiting day, while I lay in my bed waiting for my parents, a bunkmate came running in and announced my parents were on the down the dirt road. To my bunk. I was so excited and jumped up and ran outside. I looked down the road and saw Mama and Papa. I remember thinking that my bunkmate was crazy. They were white-haired people, white-haired people, ever so 
slowly, making their way down the long road. How could she ever think they were my parents? In retrospect, how many grandparents slept the visiting day? And mind you, it was one visiting day and many camps to cover. But for years, Mom and Papa put comfort aside, packed a dozen separate petal up, and set out on a, a dusty, hot, congested tour of the Catskills, year after year after year. Similarly, Mom would hear of a person going my way, whether it was when I made a shalom supper or just for a yom tov, and she sent a delicious care package. Even in my adult life, it was always with childlike excitement that I opened the David Elliott box to find some of the only calls for the family, or I am from scratch. <coughs> for her family in any way she could imagine would be huge and useful to be very natural to me. So it was said in the Messiah, I think it bears me that Mama opened up her home while still running a business in the same location to Pa, Henna, Bubba, and ultimately Papa, ensuring that their final days were comfortable and filled with warmth and love. At this time of year, I always remember the spring my father fell deathly ill in the Catskills. Mama arranged for him to be transported to a Scranton hospital so that he could receive better medical attention. No doubt this move saved his life. He was discharged on Shavuos and had to be brought home to be a wheelchair because he was younger. So I spent many Shavuos in Mom and Papa's house. The joy of seeing my father for the first time in weeks, the world coming up out of the and joining us at the Yomtev table will stick with me forever. Even in her final hours, Mama left this world bravely and without causing her children the kind of concern that long illnesses tend to bring about. Oza Hadar, Sabusha, the Tiskak, the young Akram. I remember that when I was told, when I told her I was going to attend law school, she cautioned me against it. She felt it would hamper my ability to raise a family. However, a few months later, when she discovered she knew someone with Cloud in the law school, she picked up the telephone and made a call on my life. Agreeing with me and assisting me were two totally different categories of grandparenting, and she didn't let one stop her from the other. <laughs> One other memory. Like a surprisingly large number of her grandchildren, I had occasion to live in Scranton. I did so the last summer of Bubba's life. Every week, Aunt Nan would call Mom and they would discuss Bubba's condition. Every day, immediately after lunch, Mom would go up to the nursing home to visit. One day that summer, I walked into the kitchen and Mama seemed very distracted. She was staring at the space and would occasionally make a disgruntled clucking sound with the mouth or drum her fingers on the table. When I inquired about what was disturbing her, she told me that Nan had said Ira was in crisis. A very few days later, I walked into the kitchen just as she was hanging up the blue telephone that was a mainstay of Erev of er of Shabbos in the young girl in her kitchen. With her beautiful smile, she announced to me that she had just reached a landmark in fundraising for Ira's benefit. I cannot be certain of the exact number of nearly 30 years later, but I do recall it was thousands of dollars she had raised in the briefest amount of time. Mama was a woman of action, and as soon as she set, as soon as she figured out how she could help her nephew, she set, successfully set out to do it. As was mentioned at her Levaya, she was profoundly responsible for the formation of the Scranton Hebrew Day School. Though I certainly don't recall those days, I do recall summer after summer of watching Mama and Papa working at the school picnic and spending that specific weekend in Scranton so that the whole family could be a part of their cause. Rabos Bamers Asukaila, Bas Alis Al Kulana. May her Neshama have an Aliyah and may she, with Papa, continue to inspire us, guide us, and comfort us from their lofty places.